on a Friday night, I feel like we should all have wine or something, you know, just hanging out, which I love. But um, like Bree said, thank you guys so much for having me. My name is Olivia Celine. I'm a two-star diamond coach. Been coaching since August of 2014. I'm going to try. I'm a fast talker and I'm also like a no bullshit. So I hope that that's okay with you guys. Um, I don't beat around the bush. I kind of just say it how it is. And I, I know that it all comes from love and it comes from me Everything I'm going to talk about tonight of getting in your own way and the different ways that that happens, I've been there and I've done that myself and I've watched my coaches do it. So that's why I feel excited and I get fired up and pumped up to talk about it. So um, I've been coaching like for a couple of years now. And so I know this time of year is hard um, and I know that it can be super frustrating. I know we can get a lot of crickets and I know that it can feel like everyone's zooming past us and we're staying the same and just know that good times are coming if you stay the course. And so I'm going to talk to you about tonight getting out of your own way because I do think it's super important this time of year, especially because people either one, they give up, they throw in the towel, they let off the gas and they just stop trying. They're like, Oh, well, I didn't hit my goals this year. Oh, well, I guess I'll try next year. Or number two, they slow down. They, you know, reduce their invites. They kind of check out of their challenge group. They don't really get any results this time of year. They kind of just coast on by and just wait till the new year when everything gets easy again. Or you can be a fighter and you can get the hell out of your own way and you can know what you're fighting for, have that driving force, have that why, have that burning passion and be like, everyone else is slowing down and I'm not giving up. And that's going to set you up. What you're doing now is setting you up for January, February, March and seeing success in those months. If you slow down right now, I promise you, you'll wonder why everyone's having a booming New Year's resolution group and you're not. It just happens. I've, this is my third holiday season and it downright sucks a lot of days. It's hard. And it's like, you have to just work 10 times harder than you normally do, but I promise you it's worth it. So this time of year, I think it's super important to reevaluate your goals. I mean, we just hit a bonus qualification. I didn't hit my goal. Um, I know Brie posted she didn't hit her goal this year. It's a bummer. It hurts. It stings for a minute. Feel that pain. Get pissed off about it. Kind of figure out, self-evaluate, see what you might have been able to do differently. Talk to your team. Figure out what you're going to do differently next bonus quarter. Um, but just know it's not over. You can still keep going. You can still rank advance. Is it going to count towards elite or premier or whatever's next bonus? No, it's not going to count. But it still means that you're a leader in the company. And I like to watch this time of year because my number like in the company and I'm sure you guys can relate kind of starts to soar because so many people are slowing down and you kind of start to rise up and you get to be the one that shines even in the darkest times right now. So ask yourself, are you doing consistently what it takes to be successful? Were you worthy of that rank advancement? Were you actually doing the action items or were you waiting for your team to figure it out and to get you there? Um, it's a hard question we have to ask ourselves sometimes, especially when things are so busy and crazy, but are you consistently working in order to be worthy of whatever that success is that you're trying to get to that next goal or that um, success club number or however many people you want to sign this month. Are you worthy of that? Because you have to be working even when you don't feel like it. And I just want to ask you a simple question before I kind of jump into the, the bulk of the topic, but are you settling for okay? Are you settling for average? Are you settling for SC5. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that. The last couple months I've hit SC6 and I haven't done it without trying. I mean, I've been busting my butt, but it just happens to be this time of year and what's going on in my business. But are you settling for okay when you know you're capable of great and you know you're capable of amazing things? Do you truly believe that deep down inside of you that I am capable of success and I am worthy of it and I am going to make it happen? Or are you just settling kind of that coasting life where you kind of just go by and you just keep up with the same messages and you never send the new invites and your challenge group kind of sucks. And we all just kind of like, like go off of the gas a little bit. So just some kind of self-reflection, some tough love for you. Um, I know again, this is hard. This, this time of year is hard, but please, please, please do not give up on me because I promise you good times are coming. If you stay the course, it's the law of compensation. You put in, you get out, you reap what you sow, but it has to be done now if you want to see success in um, the next couple months and in the new year. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here and share some slides with you guys. You can see all my bajillion tabs. Can you guys see that? Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So getting out of your own way, I'm going to talk tonight about the four things holding you back. And like I said, when I started my business, every single one of these things had held me back at some point or one of my coaches. Um, and so I'm anxious to see kind of where you guys stand and kind of where your head is at with these four things as well. 
Um, I did not come into this business flying through the ranks, um, flying through the rooftops. I came into this business extremely stuck. Um, I was stuck. I had about 45 pounds to lose that I had gained after I got married. Um, I was lost. I was lonely. I was a military spouse living alone again. Um, my husband was deploying soon. I had a lot going on, but I was excited about this opportunity because I watched my coach be successful. Now, I will tell you, I told her no three times before I finally said yes to her. So if you have someone that's telling you no that is on your dream team list, do not give up because if she would have given up on me, my pride would have gotten the best of me and I would not be here right now. But she kept coming back and she kept saying, I truly believe you are meant to do this. I truly believe that you are meant to do incredible things and your gift of encouragement is needed here. And because she believed in me before I believed in myself, you guys, I'm here now and I have been able to build um, a, a, a substantial income and bring my husband home. Um, he is still doing his own thing. He um, has other passions of his own. He's not like home with me working beach body at this point yet, but we were able to leave that safety net of the military. And while Beachbody does not guarantee any levels of success or income, <laughs> um, but it was like a huge driving force for me my first two years of my business. And it got me up early before I went to work. It kept me up late at night. It kept me from seeing him a lot of the time. We didn't have a lot of social time. We didn't have a lot of date nights, um, but I was building a business to be able to bring him home and stop the deployments because it was a hard life. And I know a lot of you can relate to that. And um, I wanted more than that. And so did he. So that's just a little bit of backstory about me, but I'm going to get into number one now. Number one thing, it's time to get real with yourself. What is standing in your way? And every single one of these things is going to be something within yourself. So it's really easy a lot of the time to say like, well, my team just doesn't want it. And well, this person just doesn't get it. And like, oh, well, I'm just not attracting the right kind of people. I'm just not, Facebook affinity sucks. Like that's why my business is failing. And trust me, I've said all of those things to myself and I get it. And it's so easy and it's a lot nicer. And it feels a lot better to blame it on someone else or something else. But then how come all these other coaches are seeing success and how come they're moving forward? It's not your team and it's not your posts. It's yourself and it's the things within yourself that I'm going to talk about tonight. Um, that are getting in your way and are stopping you from maybe getting to that next point of success. So number one is deep rooted, unwavering belief. Um, this is something that I see a lot of people try to get by without is that deep rooted, unwavering belief in yourself, in this opportunity, in the products, in the support system that is challenge groups. I mean, challenge groups are life changing. It's the only reason I'm still here two years later. It's because it's the first time I've ever been able to stick with something. And that's because of challenge groups. It is unwavering, deep-rooted belief in this opportunity. Do you truly believe when you send a message, do you get excited and giddy about the fact that you're giving someone a gift in that one simple message? As scary as it might be, are you like getting the, the hair, uh, hairs on your arms? Do they stand up when you're like, oh my gosh, girlfriend, you have to know about this. This is going to change your freaking life because it has mine. So you have to have that belief. Nothing else matters without it. You can go through your tracking sheet every single day and check off all the vital behaviors and you can check off um, invites and you can check off follow-ups. But if you don't have a belief in what you're doing, people are going to sense that and you're not going to move forward and you're going to get stuck. I've been there. Um, if you're not doing personal development, you have to be because it is your bloodline for this. It will help you develop that belief. Um, so how do you develop belief in yourself? Through personal development, through affirmations, through putting discipline and habit and action behind those affirmations. How do you develop it in your team? You get on one-on-one -on -one calls with them. You get on team calls. You start to get to know them and their whys and what makes them tick and what's going to help keep them staying motivated, you're going to develop belief within your team and within where you guys can go. Um, when I started shooting for Five Star Elite, which again, we didn't hit it this year and okay, next year, you know, here we go. But um, I had to know each and every single one of those coaches who was going to help us get there for as us um, as a team. And I had to know each of them individually and what made them tick. And I had to find that belief in them before they even found it in themselves. I had to remind them on those days when it was hard and when they couldn't see it in themselves, that they were meant to do this and that they absolutely could if they put the action in. So just like my coach believed in me before I believed in myself, it's our job as coaches to believe in our challengers and our team and our coaches before they believe in themselves. 
um, developing a deep rooted belief in your why this comes from having a vision board and having it and sitting down with your spouse and your family and talking about that future that you're creating for them. And that, that crystal clear picture that literally makes your stomach turn when you think about it, because it's so powerful for you and knowing that it could actually happen and having that deep rooted belief, you guys, that's going to get you up early and it's going to keep you up late and it's going to get you doing the things that sometimes we don't want to do. Trust me. There's so many things that I find so much fun in this business and bring me so much joy, but there's also the tedious little stuff that I don't necessarily want to do every day, but it's something that we have to do in order to have success. Um, finding deep rooted belief in the products comes from using them being proof. The products work. If you are not getting results and you are not drinking your Shakeology, like when I hear coaches say, I just have so many bags stacking up at home. I think I need to put it on hold this month. Okay. Well then where, why are you not drinking it? There's 30 servings and there's 30 days in a month. What, where's that disconnect? You have to be drinking it every day because you need a story with it. If I go tell someone they need a challenge pack and they're like, well, why do I need Shakeology? And I'm like, well, because it has over 70 plus organic superfoods from around the world. No one cares. They want to hear your story with it. And they're going to develop belief in what you have to offer when you believe in it yourself first. So have proof that the products work. Having deep rooted belief in this business comes from doing it and having those small successes. Even if you're just making like $15 a week. I remember when I had those weeks where maybe I made $40 and at first I was like, well, no one cares about this, but they do. That's what people can relate to more so than I brought my husband home. People can relate to those small victories, those small wins that heck I filled up my grocery, you know, my grocery uh, cart today, or I filled up my tank of gas because of Beachbody. And that's something that starts to help me kind of develop that belief in this business that it truly is possible for me and that it could be possible for others. And again, that comes with belief in the opportunity. So when I message people, I get so excited. And that's why I love voice messages because people can sense that excitement. But you guys, this opportunity is life changing if you let it and if you truly believe in it. So you have to believe in everything or else fear and doubt will destroy your entire business. I've been there. Um, I've taken steps backwards before. And it's that second that that belief starts to slip and I start to question myself and I start to say, well, what do I have to offer them? And gosh, but am I, are we really better than it works? Like, could we be anytime those little thoughts might creep in that is going to destroy my business if I let them sit there. So belief needs to be the gas in your tank every single day that gets you fired up when you wake up, wake up and get out of bed in the morning because you truly believe in where you're headed and you absolutely want to bring people with you. So you have to believe here's my affirmation. I am here because I am meant to do something amazing with this. Every single one of you landed here for a reason, whether it's a calling or a purpose or a mission or whatever you call it, you're here for a reason. Your coach invited you for a reason, or you showed up on their page for a reason, whatever it might be. I truly believe everything happens for a reason. So know that you're meant to be here and that is, there's power behind that for sure. Number two, taking massive action. Do your actions match your intentions? Could your coach look at your tracking sheet every single day and be proud of what you've done? Um, I like to self-reflect every week and ask myself, if I was someone else's coach, um, would I, or if I was my own coach, would I hire myself or would I fire myself? Am I truly living out what I am preaching? If I'm telling my coaches to do their tracking, do their inviting, do your follow-ups, am I doing them first? As leaders, we lead by example. And the second that I had to be very real with myself at the beginning of this year, and I was wondering, why is nothing happening in my business? And why aren't we moving forward? And I had to take a hard, deep look at myself and say, oh, damn. All right. Well, I have not been inviting consistently. I've been riding on that. Oh, people are coming to me. I'm hitting success club. Things are fine. I must have made it where things are going to be really easy from now on. And coaches are just going to find me on Google and it's going to be awesome. Okay. Yeah. I'm not there yet. I am not um, top 10 coach material at all. And so I had to be very real with myself where I had to take action every single day in my business. I am staying in phase one always. I never get out of phase one just because you've been a coach for X amount of time doesn't mean you've made it and you can stop trying and it just like happens for you. Um, I mean, there might be coaches out there like that, but I haven't met one yet. So um, make sure you are taking massive action and not just action and not just kind of pushing on the gas. You need to be pushing on the gas. If you have big, hairy, scary, audacious goals for yourself and your family and your team, you have to be leading by example and carrying that torch and lighting the way for them. So I, um, need to be a tracker, I realized, because um, I was like, oh yeah, I did stuff today, yeah. 
And then I'd get to the end of the day and I was like, oh, maybe, what did I do today? <laughs> so if you're one of those kinds of people too, I truly recommend tracking. I think it's a great way to be able to say, am I doing those simple activities, those things that are easy to do, easy not to do? If I shared it with my success partner, would I feel proud of my efforts or would I kind of be like, oh, girl, you got to step it up in this area. So be your number one fan, be your number one tough love coach and say, am I doing what I need to be doing? Am I truly leading by example? Um, and that comes through tracking and being accountable to that. Um, I don't know where you guys stand with your faith, but for me, um, I have a lot of coaches um, who I, I used to have a lot of coaches. They don't anymore like that are like this, but they would say like, oh, well, I'm just like praying about it all the time. Like I'm praying, I'm praying for it. And I'm like, okay, that's awesome. Totally awesome. But you have to pray as if it depends on God and work as if it depends on you. Cause God isn't going to bless what you're not working for. He's not just going to like throw a million dollars in your lap and say, congratulations to you. Um, that was amazing. Great efforts, great prayers. Like you are a prayer warrior. He's not going to say that you have to also put in the work and you have to be pushing on the gas and then you can pray for him to bless it as well. If that's your thing, if it's not cool, but I had to be very tough love with my coaches in that where I was saying, well, he's not going to bless what you're not working for. So you have to make sure that you're putting in the action and the time and efforts first. So take massive action. Number three are limiting beliefs and fear holding you back. Ugh, these ones are, this one's tough. I went to Tony Robbins UPW this past weekend. It was incredible. If it's not on your vision board, it needs to be. I cannot wait to go back next year already, but ask yourself what you're afraid of. Um, I notice a lot of times when I'm talking to my coaches in one-on-ones and they're not advancing and they're not moving forward. And I start to kind of dig deeper, like what is it that's holding you back? And I find these limiting beliefs within them that maybe they didn't even see themselves. Like, well, I'm too young and I don't have enough time. And well, nobody cares what I have to say. And I don't have a big enough network. And I live in a small town and they say like little things like that, that are limiting beliefs. And you guys, those are holding you back. You have no idea what you are truly capable of. You are absolutely worth amazing success. You can do this. Anyone can do this. If any of the top coaches have proven to us, this business doesn't play favorites. It's not like, oh, well, she's blonde and she's got a really big network, so she's going to be successful. Like almost every single top coach comes from hell and back and they have fought through, you know, high waters to get to where they are now and they're paving the way of success. Success leaves clues. You can do this. Your story could be the biggest mission for you. It could be your platform to share what you've been through and that struggle becomes your story and that mess becomes your message if you allow it. But you have to get through those limiting beliefs first. So I like to ask my coaches, okay, so what are you afraid of? And a lot of times it's inviting. And I don't know if any of you can relate to that. I know I could for sure. Um, and I would say, okay, well, what's, what's the worst thing that can happen? I mean, what's the, like, if you send an invite to this person that you're like terrified of sending a message to, because you really care what they think, which we all have those, they're on our dream team. And we're like, well, I don't want her to say no, like that would suck. But what's the worst thing that could happen? I mean, you're not going to die. I mean, that'd be like a huge coincidence if you like killed over and died, but you know, is it, you're going to get blocked. Okay. I've been there. I've lived through it. I'm here to tell you it sucks. It stings for a second. Feel the pain, get over it, move on. They don't serve champagne at pity parties, but we've all been there and it's their loss. And I truly believe that everyone that is on my team, I believe is meant to be there. And if I get blocked, I started telling myself, well, first I talked to like my success partner about it. And we just kind of like, Oh, whatever that sucks. Ugh. And she helps me feel better for a second. But then I'm like, Obviously, they weren't meant to be on my team, and that's cool. Now I have more time and more energy for the people that I do care about and that do care what I have to say and that are meant to be on my team. So don't let getting blocked or getting told no or having people talk crap behind your back. I've been there too, even family. Um, you know, maybe you're not allowed to talk about Beachbody at the Thanksgiving table, but like, what's the worst that could happen? Are you going to quit? If you, if that one person tells you, no, do they carry enough weight to make you quit? If they do, your why is not strong enough. Your driving force isn't big enough and hairy enough and scary enough and making the, you know, your stomach turn and your eyes water when you talk about it. Because the worst thing that could happen is they say no. And then you say, all right, next, moving on. But then why don't you reverse that and say, what's the best thing that could happen? If this person, if I send this scary message and I'm like, okay, I've been thinking about you for a while, girl, and I've been wanting to say this, and I know this is super random, but have you ever considered doing what I do? I've sent that message, and I have a few people that were like those scary ones that I was terrified of, and they said yes. They're like, oh my gosh, where do you messaged me? What is it that you do? Like, that's the best case, right? And they could say, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to message you for a while. This is awesome. So start to pump those things into your head. Start to get rid of those limiting beliefs and those fears of like, well, I'm not good enough and it's never going to happen. And you know, why would they sign up with me when they can sign up with her? 
know that belief in yourself, you are truly capable of amazing things and you're capable and worth leading an amazing team and an incredibly successful team. But you have to get through those limiting beliefs and those fears. Ask yourself if it's worth it. If they say no, was it still worth it? Because what if they say yes and they're like that next person that's going to like become 15 star diamond and like skyrocket your team and they're going to be able to bring their husband home. I think about it too when I'm inviting, if that's your fear, because I know it is a lot of people. There's someone on the other side of that screen that is praying and crying and just like suffering alone and asking for an answer and asking for someone to shed light on their situation because that was me. And my coach said, hey, have you ever considered? And it completely changed the course of mine and my family's future forever. So everything you want is on the other side of that fear. So fear is holding you back. I encourage you to dig into some personal development, talk with your coach, talk with your success partner and work through it. Um, if you have, if you have the funds and the ability, please go to Tony Robbins because like heck four days of like 15 plus hour days is about limiting beliefs and fears. So listen to his stuff. He's got some awesome stuff, some awesome audios um, and some books too, but it's incredible what happens when you choose to get over those fears and you choose to work through them because we have to choose every single day to be a victor, not a victim. So you can do this. I promise you, if you have a fear, one of the things I loved at Tony Robbins side tangent, but he would do these interventions and he would go up to people in the audience and he would say, all right, like, what's your biggest fear? What's your limiting belief or what is like going on in your head? And they would say like, oh, well, I just feel like I'm not enough. I feel like I'll never be enough. And he goes, okay, who else in here? There's 11,000 of us. Who else in here feels like they're not enough? And like 75% of the room raises their hand and he tells them to look around and he goes, okay, do you see how original your fear is that limiting belief? Do you see how original that is? Like everyone else feels that too. So know that you're not alone in that. And most of us are feeling that exact same thing. And those are who, who are successful are choosing to work through that and who are choosing to go do those things that scare them and grow because of it. So number four, Tracking and consistency. Is consistency holding you back? I know they say there's no secret sauce, but I believe it is consistency in this business. You can do everything right. You can do it for like, dab you can be a dabbler and a toe dipper, but if you're not consistently putting in the efforts, you might watch people skyrocket ahead of you at first. I've had, you know, we've all had some coaches come in and they're like crazy, uber successful right away. I was not one of them, um, but I've had coaches like that. But if they're not consistently doing the vital behaviors and consistently tracking their business and being proactive in it and doing those things, they, that, they start to lose that fizzle a little bit. They, they fizzle out, that steam kind of lets off, and then they're like, well, well, now what? Okay, so consistency is the secret sauce. You can be successful without it at first, but I promise you it will die out if you're not doing those things. And like you saw, um, like I said earlier, my business kind of fizzled out towards the beginning of the year because I was not being consistent in my actions and I had to check myself. So again, with the belief, you have to believe in yourself every day every single day. And if you wake up and you have one of those days where we have kind of like those dark shadows and those creepy beliefs that kind of creep in and tell us it's not going to happen and what the heck is the point of trying, shut it off, talk to a success partner, talk to your coach, talk to your spouse, dig into some PD. That, those are the kind of mornings that I just do PD. I don't even get into my inbox because if I go into my inbox with that limiting belief mindset, my messages are going to be different. So be consistent in that. The compound effect. If you haven't read The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy, it's a game changer. Those little tiny things that we do every day that seem so mundane. Like, do I seriously have to follow up with three more people today? Do I really have to add five friends to my network today? Like, that will do nothing for my business. I promise you it will because that adds up over time. What is that? Five people a day for seven days, 35 new people in your network that could potentially be awesome clients or awesome coaches on your team. So those little things that your coach is telling you to do and Beachbody is telling you to do, they do matter. Um, the law of compensation says if you do those things, if you do those little tiny things every single day and you have those small habits and you take massive action every single day, you will see success. It just takes time. I just, it baffles me when I watch coaches quit and they're like, well, it didn't work for me. It just didn't work for me. And I'm like, well, wait, you've been a coach for like four months. This business takes time. If we were all successful right away, why wouldn't everyone be doing this? But the people that are successful in this business choose to work through that time. I mean, my first six months, I made like 10 cents an hour for the time I put in, but it does add up. You guys, I've watched my income double, triple, quadruple over time as I'm staying consistent with my vital behaviors and with those things that make my business continue to move forward. 
Again, the proof is in the success before us. There are so many coaches that we've watched who maybe like kind of coasted for a minute. Maybe they didn't grow very fast, but then they're like in the million club all of a sudden. You're like, wait a second. How did that happen? You've only been a coach for four years. Not even what is happening. It's because they were consistent in those daily actions and they were showing up even when it's not convenient. I mean, my coach, Jess Pasola is my um, upline coach and she was in the hospital like on, I can't, this is a little graphic, but she was like on the toilet. Out, coming out of both ends and she's still sending her invites you guys she's still doing it because it matters every single day and if you can't do it consistently at the same time every day that's okay I know a lot of you are moms do it in those little power pockets throughout your day when you can make it happen and just make sure at the end of the day you would either hire yourself or you would fire yourself and you're staying accountable to that I want to ask you how bad do you want it how bad do you actually want it? Are you fighting day in and day out through thick and thin hell and high water to make this happen for yourself? Do you want it bad enough where you, I, I mean, sometimes I think we're tested a little bit. Um, you watch coaches quit. It stings. It sucks. I've had two diamonds quit two last year, July of last year. Um, and it sucks and it, it hurts and it just like makes you question everything. But I, it's, I mean, okay. Anyway, like moving on with the rest of my team that does want it running with the willing, right? Like I want this so bad. And I see this just like bright future for myself and for others that I invite in my coaches and my clients, and they need me to show up for them consistently every single day. And they deserve the best version of myself every single day. We are what we repeatedly do not just by those little things that we kind of kick our shoe out every now and again, but by those things that we do every damn day, even when we don't feel like it, that is who we are is what we repeatedly do. And that's why they say excellence is an act is not an act, excuse me, but a habit. It's those daily habits that you're creating for yourself. Um, so now I'm just going to give a little snippet on PD because I'm a PD junkie. It's like my jam. It's the one thing I could, I would not be here if it wasn't for personal development, but Angie Lee says it perfectly. You can read every PD book in the world, but if you don't get up, get messy and get to work, shit doesn't happen. Perfectionism will keep you broke. So personal development, you guys, has to be your bloodline. It has to be that thing that fills you back up. This business downright wears me out sometimes. It depletes you. It is giving, 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 giving of yourself with little in return sometimes, especially in the beginning. And it can make you question yourself. Like, guys, there's plenty of times I still think like, gosh, my life would be a lot easier if I didn't own a business. If I wasn't running a business, I could just like unplug after my nine to five and I didn't have to think about everything all the time. And I could go enjoy wine on the couch with my husband and not have to care <laughs> about my phone blowing up and not have to care that like a million people need me at that moment. But what was your life like without Beachbody? I mean, I was lost and I have to go back to that girl sometimes and say, no, like I got to keep fighting for her. I will never go back to who I was before Beachbody because she was lost and she was hurting. And I have to remind myself of that sometimes. But again, this business, you have to be willing to fight through the hard to get to the good. I promise you do not quit five minutes before your miracle. Your time is coming. Your success is coming. The, the bright, shiny future, the light at the end of the tunnel is coming if you choose to push through. And the way we push through is we dig our heels deep. We take massive action. We do our personal development and we truly believe that this is going to happen for us. Um, I think that personal development, I truly believe it gives meaning to your struggle. It takes your struggle and turns it into a story. Everything you go through in this business, I believe is for a reason. Um, I, because I know for everything I've gone through in this business that sometimes makes me question everything. It makes me, I mean, my coach has to talk me off of a ledge. Probably I'd say it once a quarter, um, uh, just to talk me, you know, like, Oh, don't quit. Don't quit. You got this. You got this. But it is so that I can help someone else go through it. Whether it's someone on my team or someone that messages me and says, wow, your story was really inspiring. I'm going through exactly what you went through. And I'm able to help people through that because that's what I love about Beachbody is that we're a community and we're a family, whether we directly reflect success on someone else or not, we're all here to help each other. So personal development, non-negotiable every damn day. Don't care, make time for it. Audios, podcasts, whatever you got, sit down and read a book and highlight and scratch all over it. But make sure you get up, get messy and get to work because Waiting and being an inform information hoarder is not going to get you anywhere. I've tried it. It doesn't get you anywhere. And it kind of stops you a little bit. Two books a month is my goal as well. I know, Brie, it is yours as well. So I know you taught them that. Um, but two books a month, one that's very personal and one that's more of like a leadership or some kind of training um, because I do believe there's a difference between personal development and professional development because we have to work on ourselves to become a better leader, a better coach, a better mentor, friend, spouse, whatever it might be. Um, it starts with us. 
So now I'm gonna give you some action steps and then I'll open it up to questions if anyone has any. But number one, know and feel your why. Your why should make you cry. Um, and maybe your why is just to, I don't know, um, put your kid through school. Maybe you don't have this huge goal of being a millionaire and that's totally fine. Like you have a place here, absolutely, 150%. But it needs to be enough that it's going to help you do those things that you don't really want to do. It needs to be something that's bigger than you, that's bigger than that thing right in front of you. Maybe it's just accountability is your why. And it's just accountability to stay accountable to your goals and be proof that this works for other people. That's an incredible why. But instead of just focusing on yourself, think about those people that are watching you. And if you stop showing up, who else stops showing up? Because it does matter. Every single day that you post that sweaty selfie, as minimal as it seems, it matters. So know and feel your why. Have it pinned up all around you in your office. Have it on your phone. Have it in your car, wherever it might be. And have people in your life that can remind you of that why when you don't feel like doing those things. Number two, follow those who you relate to and um, have already what you want. So people on social media, there's other coaches. Now, I do think that it's important to not just follow a bunch of coaches because A, you're not getting other people in your newsfeed and B, it can get really easy to get caught up in comparison, which I do not, I mean, it'll steal the joy right out of you. But follow those who have maybe reached your why. Maybe it's bringing your husband home. I know for me, when I wanted to bring Joe home, I followed Tara Carr. Um, I was following Brittany Leggett and there's um, Summer Tucker. And those are people who had already done what I wanted to do. And I was able to learn from their story and relate to them in a way that I couldn't relate to my coach in that way because that wasn't her goal. That wasn't her why. But I saw these other coaches do it. And I was like, all right, she's done it. And that reminded me every single day, like, if she can do it, I can do it. There's m like multiple successes for all of us, limitless lux or whatever they call it. There is more than enough success to go around. And if she can do it, I can do it. And that kept me going even when I didn't feel like it. Number three, make a plan and fight like hell for it. Daily action, consistency, have a tracking sheet, know what your non negotiables are every single day, your four vital behaviors. Every day we have those things that we have to do no matter what. And then there's those like things that are like, okay, well, if I can't get to these, it's okay. Like making a graphic. If you don't make the graphic today, it's not going to hurt your team. It's not going to be the end of the world, but you need to do your invites and do your follow-ups and do your workout and drink your Shakeology and do your personal development and recognize something within your downline or your challenge group. So make that plan, have those non-negotiables, have those no matter what, and fight like hell for them. Whether you're doing 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here, 15 minutes here to get your power hour in, whatever is going to work for you and your lifestyle and your family, that's what I want you to do. And then when you have a plan as far as your goals go, get your team on board. So if you guys are shooting for elite, for premier, for rank advancement, that comes from your team and you cannot do it by yourself. I've tried. <laughs> it doesn't work. So make sure you know which coaches on your team are willing to fight for that goal with you and make sure they're wanting it for themselves, not wanting it for you. Because I've had coaches before be like, oh, I feel like I'm letting you down if I don't shoot for this goal. And I'm like, you're not letting me down by any means. I want this for you because I know your why. And I know that driving force and I know that goal of yours. And I know that you rank advancing and you getting to the next level is going to help you be closer to reaching that why and making that a reality. So get your team on board, make these team goals. It's more fun that way than just fighting for it by yourself in all honesty. Um, so make sure you have a plan and you're fighting for it. Number four, find no BS accountability. I have had success partners <laughs> before where we're just like, how was your week? And we're like, oh, it's really good. It's really good. And we're like kind of friends more so, which I think is important too. But you also need that success partner that's going to look you in the face on Zoom and say, well, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do? They're, hey, did you get this project done that you've been trying to get done for three weeks? And not just be like, it's okay. Life happens. All right. Like you need no BS accountability. And I think it should come from A, your coach a little bit, but also someone else because Someone else is going to be able to speak to you in a different way than your coaches. You've got a different relationship. Um, so I think that's super important to find someone who's going to hold you accountable and help you with those non-negotiables. Number five, do not settle for less than your best. You don't have to do it all every single day. Okay. There's things that are just not going to happen. Like I said, graphics, or maybe you had this really big goal of checking in and like, calling five people on your team and maybe the calls aren't going to happen today. But what I want you to do is every day, wake up with the intent to be your absolute best that day, whatever that means for you and your family. Do not settle for what you don't settle for less than what you truly are capable of because you can do this and you have to follow through on that. Number six, change your shoulds to must. So a lot of times 
I'm like, wow, I really should. I really should check into my challenge group today. Hmm. No, I have to. It's a must. I must check in. Like Bree said before we started the call, I have to check into my challenge group today. We have to do it, you guys. So we have to hold each other accountable and make sure we check in and do our workouts as well. So don't just have the shoulds. Have those non-negotiable musts, those things that have to happen no matter what, even if you have to stay up three hours later. That was me last night. I didn't, um, I spoke on someone's call at nine and then I didn't do my workout yet. I had to do it too at like 1030 last night. So I get it. I totally get it, but you have to do it. That's what we do as coaches. We lead by example. So make sure you have your musts that you do no matter what. Number seven, decide, commit and resolve. I switched to the word on you there from succeed. This is a Tony Robbins thing. Um, deciding, making the decision, making the decision to do these things or to get out of your own way or to start to believe in yourself or to start being consistent or to um, not be fearful anymore of those things that scared you in the past. Number two, commit. That means you're already in your head. It's freaking done. I committed to it. That's not even a decision anymore. Like it's done in my head. Like I'm already there. And then resolve, it's already happened. Now what? What's next? So make sure you're going through that rotation every day with those things that you have to do. Deciding, deciding it, committing to it, and then resolve. It's already happened. What's next, right? And then number eight, celebrate. I don't think we celebrate enough those little wins. Even if like for the day you just finished your tracking sheet, for one day, and that's like a big deal for you, celebrate it, turn some music on, do a dance, jump up and down, change your physiology, get into it, be obsessed, and celebrate it. Post about it, share about it. It's You guys, we have to start celebrating every single little thing, even if it's not like, oh, I'm a five-star diamond, because although that's amazing, I haven't been able to celebrate that yet, but I have to choose to celebrate those little things, even if it's a small win for me or for my team or for my challengers, it starts with us celebrating every single little thing. That's why Beachbody put the recognition vital behavior in there. It's our job to recognize and celebrate people and ourselves absolutely every single day. So that's what I have for you. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. But I was trying to go fast so you guys get your workout. Ooh. I'll stop the share too. There we go. Sorry, I was muted. I'm like starting to talk and realize I'm here. <laughs> uh, that was amazing. That's exactly what I, I needed to hear. And I know talking one-on-one -on -one with some of my coaches, it's exactly, I know like most of you probably could raise your hand and be like, I needed to hear that. Um, I preach consistency. I share that. But I think hearing from somebody else just saying like, dude, that's, that's where it's at. Like it's okay to celebrate the little things and it's okay to say, I didn't do it today, but I must do it tomorrow. Like mm -hmm. just non-negotiable and then committing and saying, I, I committed to this. Like this is something that I committed to and I feel in my heart is where I need to be. So does anybody have any questions? I didn't see any in the chat. Anybody have any questions for Olivia? Anybody? Yay, you needed this. Yay, thank you. Oh, I'm so happy. Okay. Yeah, I was, it was hoping. exactly what our team needed. Oh, we were good. like, it's like, and it's crazy because you know you can read personal development, you can and say it to yourself, and it's crazy when somebody else says it to you, you're like, thank you for telling me that. Mm -hmm. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. It comes from somebody else and from a place of like, you guys see, like, Olivia and I briefly met. We actually, I don't remember, did I, I think I, it, we commented on a chat in another group that we're in together. Mm -hmm on wanting to share team calls. And I was like, ah, oh, that girl, like I actually just met her briefly in passing the day we left new, new leadership. We weren't in a conference room. We weren't in anything. We were literally like eating, probably eating our faces off at brunch. Uh, probably way too much food. We I'm it. even wearing a brunch shirt. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah. It's cool. We were drinking, I was drinking a mimosa. Yeah. Mimosas and pancakes and all, all the garbage before leaving LA. But I was like literally in passing, you know, because uh, my success partner, Kendra, and she's like, oh my gosh, I know you from another group or coaching page and we have like similar faces. And like that connection has stuck with me. And it's funny because I'm like, that girl and I, I feel like I'd get along with that girl. I should message her. And even like the small little, that part, that fear, that doubt in myself. And she was saying like at Tony Robbins, like, what are you afraid of? And that's a big one for me. It's like just reaching out because of fear of rejection or fear of like, what if they don't like me? I've always had that. And it's crazy in this business how you can be freed from that because I was like, honestly, like, what is she going to say? Like, no, like we're all in a, we're beach body coaches. We don't do that. We aren't mean. Right? 
I mean, I have to, I have to say, I've seen a few nasty, nasty coaches, but that's very yeah. far and few between. And they're not very successful. So, um, you know, sharing and being in this together, you know, Olivia doesn't know who I am. She doesn't know who my team is and vice versa. But, but knowing that we all are just in this good fight together and knowing that we were met for something greater and being willing to open our hearts and open our teams and open, you know, our brains and knowledge for everyone to be like, spread the love. Like, like you said, there's enough success to go around. It's not like clamoring to the top and who can get the most success the fastest. It's about, let's take this journey with the willing. So anybody, I was giving it like a minute to see if there was questions, but. I know that happens too to my team. I think I relate it to if like, like when you say it, Brie, it might've been something I've said before, but it's almost like when your mom tells you like, Oh, Oh. And then you're like, okay, whatever mom. And then like another person's mom tells you and you're like, oh, that's so cool. You're right. Like it's just, it takes sometimes hearing it in a different way from someone else. And then it's like the light bulb kind of goes on, which I yeah. love. Yeah. Yeah. Or like okay. kids, they listen to their teachers better than the parents. Like, <laughs> but this was really helpful. I have like, a crap ton of notes that I'm just like Good. fired up. So I think you and I have the same approach of the no BS, like just get it done. And um, again, guys, celebrate the little things. Like it's so easy to be like, oh, I didn't hit that big 2016 goal, so I can't celebrate. And I had a little pity party. You guys saw my post. Um, but but like I then I had to reevaluate and be like, uh, I can't even talk tonight. I had to reevaluate and be like, what can I celebrate? Like our team is like. A thousand strong in our downline our team has helped people quit their job like our team has helped people lose weight and do what we're meant to do as coaches and have full transformations like I see transformations going up in our team page all the time in our challenge groups all the time and and that honestly like I went live in our team page and was bawling my eyes out looking at my online office just of all the people that we're bringing in and helping and and knowing that we're doing it right counts for something guys so like Olivia said, she wasn't a fast, you know, she wasn't out of the gate 15 star and neither was I, but, but things are happening. And I know that this is where I'm supposed to be. And, and other coaches feel that too. So, um, I think if you guys have questions, let me know. I can ask Olivia later, but I'm going to post this recording up on our YouTube playlist of team calls. So if you have coaches that need to hear this, which I know you guys have coaches on your team that need this too, um, that didn't get on tonight, make sure you watch it. And I'm going to share it in the team page because it's an important message. So Thanks for having on, Olivia. We're going to, I think there's like three or four of us now that have to go do our. <laughs> Good luck, you guys. Up, so. Good luck. You got this. Thanks, I've been there. girl. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for All having right, me. We'll talk soon. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.